So today I would like to address some concerns with regards to the air suspension that we have on the Range Rover. Now this video could be useful for someone who's looking to buy a Range Rover or someone who just bought a Range Rover and not too sure how to use the air suspension. And I'm hoping that this video will be useful to you. Now it's very raining, raining badly today, so let, let's see how, how it goes with the filming. <laughs> Apologize if the filming is bad today. But uh, you need to understand that the main, main, main differences between the a normal suspension, which is by the way, it's a coil suspension, so it looks like this. I'm gonna put a footage of it here right now. You can see on the screen, that's how it looks like uh, in a normal car, like a VW. And then uh, I'm gonna tell you here, I'm gonna show you how the Range Rover suspension, I know you cannot see it now, but I took a footage of it earlier. I'm gonna show you right now here. You can see the footage of the air suspension and it's basically looks like a bubble or maybe a football or maybe looks like a big tire. Uh, and that is the only difference is one is riding on air and one riding on coil. And that is the main difference. Now, uh, everything is okay. And so far, like everything is easy. And a lot, actually a lot of cars are adopting this technology. Like you have Audi, you have Porsche, you have BMWs, you have, uh, what else did I forget? Uh, Porsche Cayenne, I think. And by the way, the Porsche Cayenne air suspension fails way more than the Range Rover, but no one talks about that, you know? With the VW, just so you know that the the coil is standard so that means that you cannot raise the car you cannot lower the car you cannot make it soft you cannot make it a hard uh, ride you cannot make it sporty you cannot make it comfortable you cannot adjust it's just coil metal fixed but it come when it comes to range over and i think this is what people are scared of when it comes to range over it's a little bit different and what makes it different is you can actually adjust the ride and automatically when you're on a motorway it adjusts to more uh, uh, like settle or softer ride when you're going on curbs it, it uh, hardens the suspension so it's it's more like a sporty and of course don't forget that you can have a access mode you can have a normal mode which is access mode so it, the car will actually just go all the way down so you can exit and enter the vehicle easier. Also, uh, you've got the, uh, the normal mode uh, when you drive, and then you have the off-road height, so like an off-road mode, we increase the height of the car, so you can, you know, easy can go off-roading on boulders, well, well, whatever it is, or mud, whatever. And actually, one more, not many people know about it, you have an extending, uh, extended mode, I think it's called extended mode. And what it does that if you were to accidentally hit something under the car, let's say you're going off-roading and you hit a rock or something or a boulder, uh, actually the car will extend a little bit higher so to get you over that obstacle, uh, which is great. And there is a way to go on that one, by the way, using the gap tool or in the older cars, I'm not too sure about this car, but the older cars, you can press the up button and you can go up. Now, everything I said sounds complicated and complex, but don't worry, I'm gonna try to help you to understand why these cars people are scared of. And because of, the complexity of the system, people are worried about it going wrong because you have a lot of parts and a lot of safety as well. So if your air suspension doesn't work properly, that means there's something wrong and to stop it from failing, it is on purpose not working because if it does work, you're gonna have issues. And another thing, just wanna say something. BMWs, they don't have air suspension on all of the cars. They have it in the high-end cars. Uh, and it's the same thing goes with uh, Audi and stuff like that. And even VW, some of them they have, but like in the high, high-end cars. So these ones are adopting the air suspension part-time. However, all of the Range Rovers have air suspension. Or the Range Rover Sports have air suspension. All of, I do believe the Discoveries, all of them have air suspension. So you tell me, would you go with the air suspension that is a full-time air suspension or part-time? You know, one, two cars that do in air suspension. Anyway. Uh, by the way, I'm not saying anything bad about any many specific manufacturer. I'm just saying that don't worry, air suspensions are better than coil in a lot of situations. But also, yes, I understand what people mean, like because it's, it looks like a bubble or it looks like a football, it could get punctured, just like a tire. But also, I don't know if you know this, a coil could come out of the socket, which does happen a lot when you go off-roading and it could snap. So here you go. So you could have faults in both. But this is not the big problem. What it comes to the problem is the complexity of it, which I will explain to you. But look, it's raining a lot. Uh, Alex, what do you think? Should we go feed the dogs and then over there we can continue talking about it? Yes, let's let's, go, let's yeah, go, let's go. So it's raining really bad. So we had to change the camera and the mics. But 
So there are two ways when you arrive home or you want to get out of the car or whatnot. There are two ways that you can put the car into access mode. You can reach over here and press this button all the way down till this illuminate, okay? And it will be orange. That's how you can put it on access mode. When you set off again, it will go back to here. This line will illuminate and that means it's on normal mode. As well as these buttons. Also, if you press uh, this button here, which is near the window, that will uh, get the car into access mode. And again, when you drive off, it will go back to normal mode. So anytime you're on access mode, when you reach, I believe, 30 miles an hour, it will go back to the normal mode. Uh, but I will explain a little bit more about it once we get to our destination. Let's go. So as you can see here, at the moment, it is on standard mode, okay? So standard height. And here, it's not displaying anything. I'm gonna put the access mode here. And when I click on that one, you can see it's saying access height selected. And the, the car is lowering. And now this one is illuminated here. And that's how to do it. And if you wanna go on the, uh, back on the normal mode, it will, it will show here and we're showing normal height selected and now that's it as you can see here it will this will illuminate a little bit so let me show you again so if i want to go off-road i'll put it on off-road and you can see this is here illuminated and that is just showing that it's going up and when this will stop so what i mean is when the light turns off that means the off-road uh, height has accomplished and this is completed uh, and then here also it will tell you that you are on the uh, off-road height. So if I go back here, you can see that it's still Ill illuminated, but the reason why it's illuminated, because actually I have been messing around a lot with the air suspension, and this is another feature that it has, to stop it from overheating, I mean, it will actually it stop on raising, and then when it cools down, it raises. As you can see here, it has completed the raise, and now the car is actually on off-road uh, off height so as you can see at the moment the car is on the off-road height see and everything is perfect but how did i manage to put it an off-road height so quick and how did i increase the air in the airbag because the way i raised it is i put more air in the airbags here okay and the way i managed to do it is inside the car Inside the car is actually a compressor that is located in the back of the car here near the spare wheel. But this compressor is small and compact, so it cannot compress air fast enough into the airbags. So what actually Land Rover did is put a, a tank or a cylinder, or let's call it a tank, full of air under the car. And that compressor will actually compress air in the tank and have it there as a reservoir. So have it there ready to be push the air inside the airbag quickly and more efficiently rather than having the compressor put in air all the time. So you can go up and down and it's be more controlled. But because we have a compressor, we have a tank and we have four airbags, of course, now we have a complicated system. So there are a lot of valves that we need to make sure that these valves are correctly done, uh, as in correctly clean, and they're serviced, and there is no issue. And as, as I said before, when the compressor is used a lot, uh, it will overheat. And to stop it from breaking, what is gonna happen, is gonna pause for a little bit, and then work again when it is cooled down. Some people are so terrified and so scared of the air suspension filling on them, they actually go ahead and spend thousands to replace to a coil suspension rather than air suspension which i don't understand why we do that if they actually service it well and if they like let's say it does fail and they have to replace parts it's way cheaper to have it as an air suspension rather than coil suspension you're gonna hear noise outside because we're just outside tesco because uh, it's very dark and it's raining really bad on us but uh, this is the only place for us to film so anyway uh would you do that would you change the coil suspension Everyone is asking about it, but I'll tell you what, it's way, way more expensive. So going back to the point of the air suspension, it's a lot cheaper to keep the air suspension and maintain it. If you want a Range Rover, keep the air suspension. If you don't want an air suspension, you want a coil 
then why do you buy, why are you keeping a Range Rover? Why did you buy a Range Rover? You can go ahead and buy an old Discovery with a coil suspension, or you can buy a Defender with coil suspension. Do not buy a Range Rover and then you transfer it to coil suspension because you're worried or concerned. It, this is just as good as, uh, let's say you're so worried that the engine is going to break down that you actually attach a horse and change it to a cart because you're so scared that you're gonna break down the engine. It's, don't buy a Range Rover if, if you're so scared of the engine, you know what I mean? So it's the same thing. So we have changed to the GoPro and we are at Derwin Reservoir. Is it Derwin Reservoir? Alex? Derwent Reservoir, Derwent. Yeah. okay. Yeah. I, Derwent <laughs> Reservoir at Peak District and we are going to have a jacket potato. Now a jacket potato is very, very famous in the UK and it's uh, actually it's a popul uh, popular dish. Uh, and it's actually very 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 delicious thing to have you can have it with well I like it in the winter to have it with uh, beans uh, or red beans no what baked is it? beans baked beans baked beans and cheese uh, I know in the USA it's not uh, something that you know a lot of people are familiar with but you should try it you should try it and it's made inside an oven so it's like a very crispy from outside it's like roasted uh, is it roasted? It's or like a baked potato. It's like isn't baked, it? yeah. baked, but like it's like crispy from outside, soft from inside, and then they put the toppings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, it's not healthy if that's what you're thinking. It's not healthy. But anyway, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. So we are actually at Upper Durant Valley, and uh, they, this is how they make water, by the way. So water all gather in this reservoir, and then they filter it, and it goes through a lot of filtration, a lot of process. It's a big process, and then. Uh, they change it to water, which is great. Anyway, Jacob potato. Anyway guys, this is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this was useful to you. It's very raining. We need to go back home and edit this video for you. Uh, if you like this video, if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Uh, please let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.